Today we're going to talk about the 10 things that you need to do to become a Microsoft 365 administrator. These are the things that I think you should do to start your career in the Microsoft 365 space or to even further develop your career in the Microsoft 365 space. Firstly, what does a Microsoft 365 administrator do? Well, the roles and responsibilities, I've broken them down in a previous video. I'll link that in one of the cards above. And I we'll also have another video about the interview process for a Microsoft 365 administrator. And in that video, I go through the interview questions and answers, the ones that I have asked people and the ones that people have asked me when I'm going for the roles in the past. And I think that you should really watch those if you are intending to go for that because you'll be able to get a better understanding of what we look for in a 365 candidate. But this video is more about what you really need to do to sort of get into that space and make sure that you become the authority of that space and make sure you have the knowledge that you really need to nail that role and to actually improve yourself in the role and to keep growing within that role. So I've broken these down into 10 things that you can do and we're gonna go through them now. Before we do, if you are liking the content, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. I'm trying to release these once or twice a week. So let me know what you wanna hear more about. I'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. Otherwise, stay tuned. So the first thing is practice. You really need practice in the Microsoft 365 space. And when I talk about Microsoft 365 space, I talk more about the administration part of it. So things like managing SharePoint, managing Exchange Online, managing Microsoft Teams, and managing just the general back end. So the Microsoft 365 users and accounts and groups and understanding all the difference and really knowing your way around Azure Active Directory, what the different licensing is and the types of objects that you can manage, etc. That is really what you need practice with. If you purchase a license, so even if you buy the cheapest license, you are able to get into the administration portal for a lot of things. Doesn't necessarily mean you can get into the front end, so you may be able to maybe get into Microsoft Teams administration portal or the SharePoint administration portal. You don't necessarily have to have any users in there, but it's great for you to really understand the back end, so the administration portal and what the purpose of it is and what you can do in it. So maybe if you can get a license or maybe if you just already have access through where you work, maybe you can get some type of reader access to the administration portal. That would be great. It would really teach you a lot, help you understand what the different types of portals are. They're always changing. Even me as someone who's been in the industry for uh, longer than I can remember, I am always finding that Microsoft is consistently changing the portals and I'm having to relearn them a lot. So practice, practice, practice when it comes to actually administering it. And if you can actually do some stuff in PowerShell, if you have some PowerShell knowledge, it's great if you can actually execute those same things inside a PowerShell script or using PowerShell commands. Study, okay, there is lots of different courses out there, lots of different Microsoft certifications, lots of different things that you can study around the Microsoft 365 space. What I actually would recommend you to do is find the Microsoft 365 certification that you wanna go through. So there is uh, a few out there, maybe I'll list them in the description below or on the screen if I remember to do that. There is a few different certifications and Microsoft is great at telling you how to get to those certifications. So they will give you the certification path and they'll give you all the study material that they recommend that you need to go through to actually get there. And that study material is worth its weight in gold. You should really definitely read it read that material and actually try to practice it, maybe using your account that we just spoke about. So really keep studying and learning and understanding what's going on. And also try and stay on top of what is coming in. So I subscribe to a few of the Microsoft blogs, so the RSS feeds, so that I get what's coming in in the future. So I can actually understand what the new things that are coming are, what they're going to do, and how they're going to provide value to the customers. Next thing is to understand security. So security is paramount in Microsoft 365. We really need to make sure that all the administrators understand Microsoft 365 security, understand what makes good security practice in Microsoft 365. So understanding things like conditional access and multi-factor authentication, privileged identity management, all those sort of things will help you understand what you can apply to customers and to the organizations you're working in to actually get a better security posture for the organization. It's very important that all admins understand security. So that is one thing I really recommend you look into and see if you can apply it where you are. Even if you have your own subscription, just see what you can apply in that subscription and see what your organization is willing to actually turn on. Always, as usual, with security comes slight inconvenience, so always make sure that your customer or your staff are actually happy to turn these things on. Sometimes it's not their choice, 
that's a different story. Make sure that you're really understanding what security features are in Microsoft 365 or what is available to you. Okay, understanding the different types of objects. So understanding that there's users, that there's groups, and there's actually multiple types of groups. So security groups, distribution group, and Office 365 groups, really understanding the difference between those. So just understanding that there is users and there is groups and we can create dynamic groups and all the different types of things that we can create and that there is also computer objects that live in the endpoint manager. We really need to understand that there is lots of different types of things there get familiar with all the portals where you can view and manage them and you can always again you can do this in your own subscription and that's why my first point was practice so practicing all these things will help you remember them and help you understand how you can apply them understanding the different types of applications so what can teams be used for what can sharepoint be used for what can exchange online be used for what can power bi used for all of those applications that are in the microsoft 365 suite you don't have to have a very thorough understanding of all of them, but it's good if you know that they are there, what they are used for. What I would suggest is very important you understand is, and when I say understand, I mean understand very well, is Microsoft Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, OneDrive for Business, Microsoft Teams. Those are the real main ones that we need our engineers and need our administrators to understand and know what they're doing. So if you understand the application, so the front end, so you know, people using Microsoft Office, 365 Pro Plus, people using Microsoft Exchange Online and some using OWA, some people using OneDrive for Business to sync their files. It's really beneficial if you actually understand what everything is used for and that way you can actually answer questions a lot better as well. Understanding the difference between on-premises and 365. So this applies to large organizations. A lot of large organizations once upon a time were using Microsoft Exchange on-premises or they were using SharePoint on-premises or they may have been using Skype for Business or even some organizations still using Microsoft Link. It's good if you understand the new version of that in Microsoft 365. So for example, if you're an on-prem administrator, you've probably been administering Microsoft Exchange at some stage on-prem. So if you can understand how you can do those same things in exchange online then that is a big benefit as well a lot of the time these applications will have legacy remnants somewhere on on-premises environments so it's good if the engineer or administrator knows how they actually interact with each other understanding all the different portals i slightly mentioned this before so understanding that there is multiple portals so things like azure active directory security compliance the protection portal the exchange portal the sharepoint portal all of these different portals administer something different about microsoft 365 as i mentioned they're ever changing they're always moving around they're actually getting better but we also have to stay on top of the new features and how the all all the new layouts look so make sure that you are actually exposing yourself to those type of administration portals make sure that you are getting all of the benefit of looking at all of the different types of portals as well some of them a lot of people don't even look into so i've had engineers and administrators that come to us who have been 365 for a long time but they've maybe never gone into the compliance portal or maybe they've never gone into the protection portal or maybe they've never gone into secure school so get ahead make sure that you really understand that there, those portals exist and what they can be used for and what benefit you can bring the organization as a 365 administrator you also need to understand what is important to the customer so what is the key value of microsoft 365 for your customer things like Microsoft Exchange Online, things like SharePoint Online, things like OneDrive for Business Online, those are the main things that people really use 365 for. We make sure that the administrator really understands the impact on the customer or the impact on the organization or the impact on the staff member when something goes wrong with one of those things. So for example, when Azure Active Directory has gone down in the past, how does that actually affect people's productivity? So what does it mean? It means that people can't log into Exchange, it means that people can't send emails, it means that people can't download files from OneDrive. So it's really important that the engineer understands how this can actually impact the customer, the organization and general BAU. Have an understanding of what modern workplace is. So with Microsoft 365, with Windows Virtual Desktop, which we can get into another video, with Microsoft Endpoint Manager, previously known as Intune, we need to make sure that our engineers understand what a modern workplace is. So what does it look like? To me, modern workplace is being able to work from wherever you are, but also retaining access to everything that you need in a secure and a safe way. So I think it's very important for our engineers and our administrators to understand what modern workplace is in general and to really help organizations apply modern workplace and to really be able to 
help organizations understand why it is useful, what type of value they can get from it, and what it means in terms of productivity, because that's really the bottom line. Organizations are really just interested in how productive they can continue helping their organization to be and how productive they can keep their employees. So again, I have a lot of engineers that have come across in the past that don't even or haven't even heard of the Secure Score portal. Make sure that you know what the Secure Score portal is. Anyone can get access to it once you have access to a Microsoft 365 subscription from the back end, so as an administrator or even as a global reader or something like that. You are able to go in and look at what Secure Score is and identify what the, the score is for your organization. So for people that don't really know, Secure Score is a portal where it goes through a whole bunch of security items or um, security best practices in Microsoft 365 and it tells you a score. And it tells you all the things that are actually attributing to that score and what it actually recommends you to change to get to a better score. So it's very important that we are able to go through these Secure Score portals and understand what remediation of certain items will do to a business and how it will impact their productivity and their BAU. So I hope that helps. I hope that has been helpful. So that was 10 things that I think you should do to get into the Microsoft 365 space as an engineer or as an administrator. If you do want to see more content, if you did like it, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and we will see you next time.